we as members of river of life we have a duty we are from god we are from jesus christ the word all of us were created by him and for him the river doesn't change its direction it is focused nothing stops it no night no day no sun no rain the river supplies people depend on the river the river of life gives life it gives life and that life is salvation and we're coming after of life we have a responsibility we are the people our world is looking to the world is the dead sea that is waiting for the river of life to flow into it the unsaved must be saved the sick must be healed the world need to be healed we are the ones they are looking up to and we must try hard to fulfilling this task ahead of us Good morning, River of Life. Come on, can we send to our feet as we lift the name above all names? Are you excited to be at church today? Come on, let's put our hands together to worship Him who is deserving of all praise. Come on. We praise you, we praise you. We give you glory, Father. I give you glory for all you've brought me through And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do I'm moving forward to follow after you 
person He's an open door We want you We want you Like never Your presence Is an open door So come now Come now, let that be your prayer. Come on, Father, right now, come like never before. We want you, we want you here. We want to praise you today. We want to lift our voices to declare your goodness.
up to something. God is up to something right now, right now. He is up to something. He is up to something. Come on, are you glad that we get to be witness to what he's doing?
thank you, Jesus, for your care, for your love. I don't live to do my job. I don't live alone to take care of my family. I live to worship you. With all of my being, with who I am, with all my heart, my soul, to praise you and honor you.
verse says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Listen, I need to repeat that. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name forever. Is someone ready to exalt the king in this place? Can we give, can we give it something more today? Even if you're running empty, today lift up the name of Jesus even in the abundance lift up the name in the good and the bad lift up the name of Jesus today Are you a diamond or are you a pipe? Super Bowl weekend. Dr. Ron Archer is coming to talk about what it means to be a Super Bowl champion as a man. Whenever God wanted to change the world in the Bible, he called out to one man. When God wanted to save a family from a flood, he called out to Noah. When God wanted to create a new people called the Jewish people, he called out to one man, Abraham. When God wanted to put a young man on the throne of Israel to be the tribe of Judah, he called out to one man, David. When God wanted to evangelize the entire world, he called out to one man, the apostle Paul. And when God wanted to save the world from sin and destruction, he became one man. You are the man. I am Morpheus, and you are Neo. I can only show you the door, but you must walk through it. I can't wait to see you, men of God. This is Dr. Ron Archer, looking forward to tell you, what does it take to become a Super Bowl champion 
as a man. Hi, I'm Pastor Bob Dickens, and I really want to invite you to our life group. It's going to be happening in February. It's going to be entitled, A Walk Through the Bible. And let me tell you, we're going to learn the Word. I, I love the Word of God. I love to study the Word. I love the, the way the Word works in our lives. And you will really be blessed by attending this life group. We're getting, we'll be, be, be able to know, get to know other people. We'll get to fellowship with others. And all of this will be around the Word of God. I'm Carrie, and I'm going to be leading a life group called Hearing God Through Your Dreams. And in this life group, we are going to examine every dream in the Bible to see how God reveals and illustrates principles of Christian dream interpretation. I took this study about four years ago, and it was totally life-changing. I learned to hear God through my dreams, get counsel, get guidance, get comfort, and you will too. He is going to speak to you. We're going to invite him to be the Holy Spirit, to be our leader, to be our teacher through various videos. We're going to listen to him speak, and we're going to hear him. And we're, you're going to learn how to interpret your dreams, no matter how crazy or silly they are. Good morning, River family. It is so good to be with you guys on the second Sunday of January as we get ready to press into 2023 together. If you're a guest, we wanna welcome you to our home. And if you wanna to get to know a little bit more about our family, be sure to go to our website or to the Welcome Centers as you leave today. I've been seeing all of your 2022 recaps on social media and it's so good to see how faithful God has been in so many of your lives in this past year. And it just made me think about your generosity and how it's played such a pivotal role in what we do in ministry. We had the church dedication in Deboya, Ghana. We had several outreaches for River of Life Tappahannock. We went to El Salvador and did ministry and outreach and dedicated a church there. We had our Christmas Eve service, which was literally standing room only. We had our Christmas Encounter production, and there are so many more things that happened in 2022 that is a direct cause of how you give. And as always, your giving is so appreciated because we can't make ministry happen. We can't make moves happen without your generosity. Today starts our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Church, I am so excited for this prayer and fasting season because I truly do believe in my heart that God is gonna meet us in a very specific way and that the Holy Spirit is gonna move in supernatural ways in this month. I just feel it in my heart. And so I highly encourage not only you to fast and pray, obviously, but also make sure you're at prayer nights this month. It's so crucial because I believe that prayer night's gonna be the catalyst for things to happen. Last Wednesday, unreal i mean unreal so i can only imagine what god's gonna do so yeah let's pray together let's fast together and let's be a prayer night together let's do all the things together we are gearing up to take a missions trip to costa rica in 2023 and we're going to be having an informational meeting so if you want to do a missions trip and we're about to do a lot more trips guys so get your passports ready get down to the post office take that awkward picture here's mine yeah it's pretty pretty bad if you haven't done one and you want to do one, apparently this is a really good entry level. Be at this interest meeting. Pastor Angela is going to be here next week to give you even more details. So stay tuned for that next week. Get ready for a powerful word from Pastor Dale as he brings the first message in our series on prayer and fasting right now. Well, Happy New Year, River of Life. I am excited today because we are starting our 21 days of prayer and fasting. And this morning, I want us to take a look at 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 11 this morning, because as we start 2023, I want to talk about the one thing that will do more to change our lives than anything else, and that is prayer. Remember, prayer is relationship. A lot of times we think prayer is a prayer meeting or I'm going to pray over something, but prayer at its core, and we have, we have been seeing this all last year, that it is a relationship with the Lord. And it is not just 
prayer, but then if it's a relationship, that means it has to be a lifestyle. So in 2 Chronicles, we have one of the most exciting stories on relationship, on communication with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, with, the, with our shepherd, with the, our Savior, the one who knows us best. And, and it is prayer at its best. So we meet a king named Jehoshaphat. Now there were two kingdoms in history at this particular time. You had the northern kingdom, which was the kingdom of Israel, and the southern kingdom, which was the kingdom of Judah. And there were good rulers and bad rulers, just as today. And the difference between them could be summarized this way. If they followed God, he blessed them. If they didn't follow God, they were always in a panic. They were always in trouble. They were always operating out of less than God's best. And we see in our theme for this year, built to last. If we are going to have our relationship with God continue to grow and we're going to build it on a firm foundation, there, then there are some things that we are going to have to do as we seek him, as we go after him. In fact, Matthew chapter 20, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24 says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them, watch this, will be like a wise person who built their house on the rock. When it's talking about the house, it's talking about this house. It's talking about you and I, our heart, who we are at our core. So the Bible goes on to say, the rains came, they fell, the floods came, the winds blew. They beat on that house. They came against it. There were troubles, there were hardships, there were ups and downs, but it did not fall because it had been built. The foundation was on the rock. So that person that goes after God, when you and I go after God, we are going to be built to last because we are going to have a foundation that is on him. And there is a lesson for that. In us, as we have been talking last week about what 2023 is going to bring, and we've been looking at at the, the the vision of River of Life and what we want to do and what we want to become when we are in Him, and all those things, all those dreams, all those things that God has given us are going to be determined in large part by our dedication to Him by our walk and relationship with him. The Bible tells us that if we seek after God with all of our heart, if we call out to him, if we pray, if we begin to develop that relationship with him, he will direct us. He's not going to leave us. He's going to continue to be by our side and speak to our heart. In Matthew 6, it says, but seek first. Seek first who he is. Seek first relationship with him. Seek first the kingdom of God. And then all these things, the visions, the dreams, when we, when we battle trials, when the winds come, when the rains come, when the floods come, we will be able to stand because we're going after his righteousness. And all these other things that want to pull us down are not going to because we are going to have our foundation foundation built on the rock. The psalmist said in Psalm 51, listen, create in me, help me. Give me a clean heart, God. Renew a right spirit in me. I want to build my life on you. And when we build it on him, we are going to be built to last because we are building our foundation on the rock. Now, on the other hand, if we don't seek after him, we, I feel there, and, and we don't feel this, this need for real relationship, we don't feel the need to go after him, to pray, to be developed, well then, in many respects in life, we are on our own. 
And although God is gracious and he shows his mercy even to those who choose not to believe in him, listen, there are some blessings that you and I will never know. <clears throat> there is a measure of God's divine help we may never experience unless we pray and seek him with our whole heart. We have to remember that prayer is the foundation that builds on God's heart. Prayer is the foundation that builds on his heart. And we want to be built to last. This house that we are developing, that we are building, will be built to last when our foundation is on the rock, which is Christ Jesus. Now in 2 Chronicles, let's get back to that. We meet a man who called on the name of the Lord and it changed everything for him. And there are some things for us to remember as the Spirit of God is developing us, as we are building a foundation on Him, as, as He is pushing us out of our comfort zones as we step into 2023. There's some things I want us to see about prayer, to see about relationship with Him. And these principles are going to continue to layer that foundation that we have been building upon for the last 29 years here at River of Life. The first is this, preparation. Preparation pays off. Let's look at the text in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 1. It says, after this. Well, when you come to a passage and you read that, the question is, after what? What is the writer saying? What is he trying to tell us after this? So we have to go back to chapter 17 to get a feel exactly for what is happening in Jehoshaphat's life. He became king, and in 2 Chronicles chapter 17 and verse 3, it says, the Lord was with Jehoshaphat. Why? Because he walked in the earlier ways of his father David. He did not seek the Baals, but sought the God of his father and walked in his commandments and not according to the practices of Israel. Therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand and all Judah brought tribute to Jehoshaphat and he had great riches and honor. His heart was courageous in the ways of the Lord and furthermore, he took the high places and the ashram out of Judah. Now, then we see in chapter 18, he messes up. I mean, we all do that. The Bible says we all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. So he makes a mistake. And here's what he does. He makes an agreement. He makes a partnership, an alliance, if you will, with a wicked king named Ahab. They go into battle. Both armies are totally defeated. And look what happens with Jehoshaphat when he comes back home in 2 Chronicles chapter 19 and verse 1. It says, Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returns safely to his house in Jerusalem. And look what begins to take place in his heart. As the prophet tells him, hey, you messed up, you did wrong. He could have bowed his neck and said, you know what? I'm going to do things my own way from now on. So what if I had a defeat? I'm going to, do, I'm going to, I'm going to be victorious next time. That is not what happens. In verse 3, it says, Nevertheless, the prophet says, There is good in your heart, for you destroyed the Aseroth out of the land. In other words, the false idols. And watch this. You have set your heart. To seek after God. Remember, prayer is the foundation, right? Prayer is the foundation that builds on what? Not our own ideas, not our own thoughts, but on the heart of God. What is this saying to us? Jehoshaphat humbled himself. He repents before the Lord. And it tells us in verse 4 of 2 Chronicles 19, he went out again among the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim and brought them back to the Lord, the God of their fathers. He goes and appoints judges, godly judges. And, 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 he, and the Bible says that 
He charged them, thus you shall do in the fear of the Lord in faithfulness. You shall serve him with your whole heart. So here is this guy who is serious about seeking the Lord. He is trying to follow God with all of his heart. He made a mistake, but is trying to bring the kingdom back to seeking after the Lord, going back to the foundation. He made mistakes, yes, but the preparation of prayer, seeking after God, propelled him to go back to the Lord, to humble his heart and and seek him like never before. And that leads me to a prayer principle. The time to develop a relationship with God is before the problem occurs. Listen, 2022 is already behind us. It is the past. It is now logged in history. And you could have messed up. You could have failed. You could have not met your goals. You could have been disappointed in that year of ups and downs and trials that took place. But what's ahead now? That is what's important. Church, I want to tell you, there will be more challenges on the way. I mean, we're going to have challenges this year. We're going to have struggles. The floods will come. The wind will come. The wind's going to come. It will be okay, though, because our ability to deal with those will be directly related to the strength that we have in the Lord. And when we decide to let prayer propel us to a commitment to walk with him, we will not fail. We will stand in victory. The Bible says we are more than conquerors when we are in Christ Jesus. When we build upon the foundation of relationship in him, then we are going to build, we are going to build a house. Remember, that's us. That is built to last. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 1. After this. Now it kind of comes full circle. After the mistakes. After the failure. He had been faithful. After he poured out his heart to the Lord. Jehoshaphat asked God to build him up spiritually. We are going to watch him deal now with a situation that turned his world upside down. And he is going to handle it with such calmness, with faith, with peace, with clarity and conviction. And you would say, how is that possible? Because this is a person that has decided to follow God. This is a person who has decided to walk with the Lord, who has said, you know what? I am not going to build my house on the sand, on something that is going to be weak foundationally. I am going to build my house on the rock. I am going to hold to my convictions, not my emotions. My foundation is going to last because I am going to build it on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. Now, Walking faithfully with God doesn't mean that we will never have problems in our life. Jesus said, in this world, you will have problems. You read the book of James. He says this, hey, don't be surprised when things come, when winds blow, when, when the floods rise, when trials happen. You say, well, what's the advantage then, Dale, of being a Christian? Well, and, and you can even say this, since we're talking about prayer and going to 21 days of prayer and fasting, the question could easily come up, you know, wh- why develop a prayer life? Why fast? Why go after relationship? And here's the answer, because you and I will never face that trial. We will never face that situation alone. You're not going to have to just battle your own emotions by yourself or go through it on your own strength, no matter what you're walking through. You could be walking through a divorce. You could be walking through a, 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 a hardship because of a death and your heart is, is crushed. 
maybe decisions that are coming up, relationships that have failed, or maybe you have you are going through some financial issues, or you lost your house, or maybe you're dealing with an abusive situation. The Lord says this, hey, those winds will be there, but I am going to never leave you. I will not forsake you. I will help you. I will be there with you. I want you to come after me. I want this relationship with you. And I am going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give you strength. I am going to help you. I will surround people that are to, 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 to come alongside of you. Listen, preparation pays off. When we see the value of developing a relationship with Jesus Christ, we can face those trials with courage, with calmness, with wisdom, with peace. Isaiah says this in Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep in perfect peace. In other words, your mindset, your heart will keep in perfect peace. And it will be steadfast. Because why? You trust in me. Church, when our mind is set on the Lord, we can have this confidence of, 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 of faith when we are walking with God along the way. I mean, nothing changes then in our heart, in our foundation of who we are when adversity hits. Why? Because our hearts are prepared. They are prepared. They are prepared for the wind. They are prepared for the floods. They are prepared for whatever comes our way. I mean, in Psalm 105.4, it says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence. Watch this. Continually. That's, that's preparation. So if we just pray and go after God when facing difficulties, then our faith never develops because we are not consistent in our relationship. We're not consistent in our prayer life. It's true physically as well. I mean, when we stop Using our muscles, what happens? They begin to atrophy. So, so, so we, we, we forfeit something when we don't use it, when we don't develop it. We forfeit strength. We forfeit peace. We forfeit knowledge and wisdom. We forfeit kindness. We forfeit patience. So as we talk about prayer, we need to think in terms of preparation. Listen, the time to develop a walk with God is before we encounter the problem. You say, well, Dale, I'm in the, I'm in the problem. I'm in trouble right now. Well, then you begin what we're talking about today. You begin preparation today. You begin building that firm foundation right now. God is gracious, more gracious than you and I deserve. He will help you. He will forgive. He will answer. He will come alongside. He will help us start that foundation. But we have to prepare. We have to have that preparation. And that preparation comes through relationship. It comes when our heart is ready and serious about getting a hold of God and moving forward in prayer with him. I showed this last week, but I want to show it again of, of this video of, of, of prayer, of humility. I mean, this is something that the Lord gave me 15 years ago and we, we put it into, a, into a, a form of a video to show this vision that God gave me about prayer and about relationship and about the church. So I want you to take a look at that now. I had this vision where I knelt down and I put my face down to the ground and I begin to pray and for direction for our church, for what, what the Lord was doing. And, and when I looked up, I saw this and heard this wind that swept through the church and the, the people, the, the congregation were trees. And when that wind came, the, the trees broke and then I, I went back down and I prayed and I looked up and the trees again were standing and another wind came through and the trees broke in two. And, and you know, I, I'm just continuing to pray. I'm, I'm really 
uh, not knowing what is happening. I'm just seeing this vision. And I, I went down again a third time. And when I, when I lifted my head back up, in the middle of the sanctuary, there was this one massive, kind of like a, a massive oak tree that came out from the sanctuary, in the middle of the sanctuary, and the tree then kept growing and bursted out from the center of the sanctuary. The wind never stopped, yet the tree never moved. You know what? When we prepare, when the winds come and we're humbled as this, as this vision showed and we, we continue to develop and grow, we are going to go above and beyond as that, that cedar tree bursts through the congregation. We are going to do above and beyond what we could ever think or imagine. But the preparation comes with prayer. It comes with relationship with God. Well, it leads me to a second thing. Our problems. Our problems will create an urgency. Look at it in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. The Bible says that, that after this, the Moabites, the Amorites, and, and other nations begin to come against Jehoshaphat. And it says a great multitude is coming against you from Edom. And so they, they realize that that that. All these nations are joining forces to come and fight and destroy the nation and destroy Jehoshaphat. And, and so this begins to take place and this is a huge problem. I mean, this is a tragedy for him. Although he has a large army, they have recently been defeated. He is all alone because Israel's army is not fighting with him this time. So not to mention he's facing a, a multinational force and the problem is standing, is staring him, excuse me, straight in the eyes, which leads me to a second prayer principle. Problems are a part of life and sometimes no, there's no way to avoid them. We have to hit them head on. Our hearts are prepared so we are ready. Now, some problems are mild and with a little effort we are able to walk through them. Some situations can spin our life out of control though. Jehoshaphat faced a problem he could not solve. It happened on a day that, that he did not expect. I mean, have you ever been there? Things were going fine. You were seeking the Lord. Everything was good. And then boom, something took place. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, the flood came. The wind came. All of a sudden, it was sunny. And all of a sudden, it started to rain. And, and the wind and the situations beating against your emotions, trying to, to break you, trying to tear you down. This is what's taking place. But I want you to see a third thing here. Prayer then will unite us. Prayer will unite us. Look what happens with Jehoshaphat. It says, then Jehoshaphat was afraid. Another version says, then Jehoshaphat was alarmed. So all of us, it was, in other words, it's just a shock. Boom, you face that initial emotion. You, you sense it coming. But then all of a sudden, What's going to happen after that initial reaction? Watch what he does. All of a sudden, that relationship unites him with God. It unites him with the church. And the Bible says he set his face to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout the nation. And that's what we're doing. We don't know what 2023 is going to hold for any of us. But we are coming together. We are united in one heart, in one accord. We are fasting and praying and seeking God for these 21 days. In fact, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, when they were all together, it says that at the day of Pentecost, they were all together in one place. They had one heart. They were fasting. They were, they were seeking after, 
after God. And what I find so interesting here is Jehoshaphat does not go into a tailspin. He, he, he didn't start asking, God, how, 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 how could you do this? How could you let this happen? Because I've been, I've been teaching the people about you. I've been seeking after you. God, this isn't fair. He, he, he doesn't say, why me? Why now? I believe he is united with God because he is walking with God. He learned this lesson. Back in 2 Chronicles chapter 14, when, when the prophet said, God is with you, Jehoshaphat, when you are with him. And that, that was sketched in his heart, written in the core of his being. God is with you when you are with him. God is with you when you are with him. God is with you when you are with him. We have to be prepared. We have to come ready. We have to be united. Now, Jehoshaphat's confidence is not in his armies. It is in the Lord. So when the time came to run to God, he didn't have to go too far. Another prayer principle is this. If we stay close to the Lord, when troubles hit, we don't have too far to go. Church, when we stay close to the Lord through prayer, when trials come, he will be right there. Jehoshaphat has already been spending time. He has been building that foundation. He has been in the presence of the Lord. He knew how to get a hold of God. He wasn't distracted this time. He didn't try to find other answers. He went directly to the source. Because he understood what the Lord wanted to do. Because he knew he had to build his house on a firm foundation, upon the rock, and that, what, that is what he did. So he purposes in his heart and says, Lord, we are going to seek you because that is where the answer is. You're the help, he says, that we need anyway. Well, another thing I want us to see is this. Prayer, relationship with God, sparks power. Prayer sparks power. Look at it, and this is wonderful, and it teaches us some incredible things regarding relationship with God. Look at it in 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 4. And Judah, this is the nation, assembled together to seek help from the Lord. From all the cities, all the different towns, they came and they prayed and they seek God. It was like a domino effect. And, and can I just say this? Here's a problem. They, they face the situation now as a group. Did you catch that? Every city, every town. I mean, they don't say, Jehoshaphat, hey, you go pray about the situation and when you get the answer, I mean, you're our leader, you're a godly king, you walk with the Lord, you seek God's heart and you know what? Because you seek God's heart, we're all going to benefit from that. No, that's not the philosophy, that's not how they did it, that was not the direction. They all gathered to pray. They all came together. They were all in one accord. It sparked unity. It sparked power because they were together seeking after God. It wasn't just one or two people. It wasn't just the leader. That's why on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock we have our prayer meeting because we all come together in one accord with one heart calling on God. That's why it's so important to come on Wednesday nights if you're able to, to, to be here. As we all cry out to the Lord and we're building a foundation, 
We're building upon a foundation through relationship with God. And that is the only thing that is going to last. That is the only thing that is going to keep us stable and secure and steady and firm when the winds come, when the floods come, when they beat against our, 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 our psyche, our emotions, where we will stand. In 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 5, it says, Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, God our fathers, are you not God in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nation. In your hand are power and might so that none is able to withstand you. Did you not, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? In other words, he's saying, God, aren't you the one who controls everything? Aren't you the one who is in charge of absolutely everything? What is he doing? He's, he reminds himself and he reminds the people of who God is. He reminds them of what foundation they built upon. God, this is who you are. This is who you say you are, and we are serving you. We are building our lives upon you. He's saying, God, you, you haven't you delivered us time and time again. You were with Moses. You were with Joshua and Abraham as you came into the nation. He's saying, in the past, haven't you always delivered us? Haven't you always helped us? You look at it and in verse 8 and 9. He says, and they have lived in that and have built for you in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, the sword or judgment, judgment or pestilence or famine, we will stand before this house and before you. For your name is is in this house and we cry out to you in our affliction and you will hear us and you will save us. He's saying, God, aren't you the one who has promised if we call on you, you're going to answer? This is his prayer. He has come into a prayer meeting and this is what Jehoshaphat is praying. He says, you are the God who hears. You are the God who helps. And then you go down through 10 and verse 12 and he continues to pray. And he says, God, this is where we're at. We can't do this without you. And he says, God, you are the one who helps the weak against the mighty. This problem, this situation is beyond us. We cannot do it alone. Lord, our hearts are failing, but we know if we trust in you, you are going to give us answers. You are going to give us strength. You are going to give us endurance. We are going to see your hand work. Now I want you to think about something. You know what Jehoshaphat did in that prayer? And you can go back and reread it. He didn't just focus on the facts. Did you notice that? He focused on the truth. And there is a big difference between the two. He didn't say that the facts weren't real. Okay, and sometimes we do that. We think if we say the, what is in front of us, that somehow that is going to weaken our relationship with God or that means we don't have relationship with God because we don't have the faith to believe in God when we state the facts. And that's just, that's just not true. He looks at the facts. He says, here's the facts. We are facing three, in verse one, we're facing three armies. Here's, here's, his army was beaten and, 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 and Jehoshaphat's army, they were beaten badly. They were tired recently in another battle. And, and, and another army was with him and, and now they're, they're gone and they're not fighting with him. So he's standing all alone facing a multinational force and he knows his army can't win. He knows there's no way. That's the facts. And he declares, this is what I am seeing in the natural. This is a fact. Do you know what happens to a lot of Christians? A lot of times they're facing troubles and they focus on the facts. And that's all they focus on. 
The fact is, you feel alone. You feel unwanted. You feel lost. The fact is, your marriage is in trouble. The fact is you're heading towards bankruptcy. The fact is you are threatened with a, with a life illness that is tearing your body apart. The fact is you lost your job. The fact is you are weak emotionally and it seems like you cannot stand. The fact is your kids are not serving God. And and if a person won't go to God, then all they are going to see are the facts. But if we know the Lord, if our foundation is on Him, if we love God, if we call on God, if we pray, then listen, not only do we know the facts, but we also now know the truth. In fact, John 8, 32 says, and you will know the truth and the truth is going to set you free. So the facts are, yes, you're facing a situation that is impossible, but the truth is God is in control of that situation. I mean, the facts are you're facing this trial, but the truth is God has always delivered his people. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. The facts are there is no way you can solve this on your own. But the truth is there is a God in heaven and he hears the cry of the weak and he is able to help at any time in any situation. I mean, what are the facts? Yes. But we have to ask ourselves, what is the truth? I mean, this world is headed for hell. Is that a fact? Yes. But the truth is this. For God so loved this world that whoever calls upon his name, whoever wants relationship with him, is not going to be lost, but will be saved. So the prayer principle is this. When going to God, don't just focus on the facts. Focus on the truth. Remember who he is. Listen, God helps the weak in spirit. Second Chronicles 7:14 says, "If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, they'll pray, they'll seek my face, they'll build a foundation that's built on the rock that's built to last, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive them, I will heal them, I will help them, I will restore them, I will lift them up." The winds are going to come. The floods are going to come. The rain's going to come. But they are going to continue to stand because they are mine. They are mine and I love them and I'm not going to leave them and I'm not going to forsake them. Those are the facts and that is the truth. Woo! God loves us. He is going to be here for us. Listen, this fasting and prayer time isn't the finish, finish line. It's the starting point. So as we start this 21 days of prayer and fasting, think that, hey, I am in preparation. I'm in preparation for 2023. And I'm building a foundation that is going to last, that is going to hold me this year. I don't know what is ahead, but I'm going to find relationship and strength and courage And I'm going to begin to build upon the rock, which is Christ Jesus. Amen. Listen, if you're here and you're listening today and you want to know Jesus Christ as your Savior, listen, on the screen you can contact us. We we want to pray with you. The Bible says that if, if you open your heart to Him and say, listen, God, I don't want to do this life alone anymore. Forgive me of my sins. Lord, transform me. I know who you are. I believe that you, Jesus Christ, are the Son of the living God. Restore me. Help me. I'm lost without you. The Bible says that he's going to come and and you will be saved. Again, Happy New Year. We're looking forward to a great year here at River of Life. We appreciate you. We love you. God bless you.